It's not always clear just what makes a video game series popular, and devs need to find ways to improve upon the original game's formula while not alienating fans, who often have a clear set of expectations of what they expect to see in a sequel. Innovating too much could destroy the brand, and innovating too little risks a slower but equally painful death by stagnation. Rest in peace, Telltale Games. Listening to your fans is often necessary to understand what to keep and what to unceremoniously ditch. That being said, fans can be wrong, and sometimes, just sometimes, the people who make a living from creating video games really do have a better idea of what makes a better final product than the adoring public do. Some of the greatest games of all time come from devs listening carefully to their audience, and then ignoring them entirely. My name is Rach, and welcome back to What Culture Gaming. These are 10 video game developers who made the right decision to ignore fans. Number 10. Romancing Triss and Yennefer. CD Projekt Red on The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3 finally answered the burning question on all fans' minds. Will the titular Geralt of Rivia ride off into the sunset with series stalwart Triss Merigold, or with his star-crossed lover from the books, Yennefer? In fact, the game allows him to get it on with either lady. You might think some players would try to sneak in an awkwardly rendered lovemaking scene with both women. If this does happen, Triss and Yen invite Geralt for a cheeky threesome before tying him to the bed and leaving him there. Some fans were enraged by this unwelcome injection of reality into their fantasy, and the scene suffered an online backlash against the two witches failing to meekly accept Geralt's philandering. In truth, however, it's a great narrative moment that fits perfectly with the personalities of these femme fatale, and with the game's themes of decisions and consequences. For a studio that once exhibited a, uh, less than sophisticated attitude towards women, it is encouraging that they stayed true to the essence of their characters without resorting to lazy fan service. Number 9. Ditching Gotta Catch Em All Game Freak on Pokemon Black and White while the upcoming Pokemon Sword and Shield are under fire for removing some of the collectible critters, this is not the first time Game Freak has pulled this particular stunt. Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire quietly dropped the iconic Gotta Catch Em All slogan on the basis that players could not, in fact, catch em all. And the fifth generation games went one further in rebooting the entire franchise. The backlash to this decision was predictable, with players voicing their displeasure at not being able to use their favourite mons, at least until after they beat the game. Huh, sounds familiar, right? However, Game Freak certainly didn't skimp on providing replacements, and at 156 new creatures, black and white feature a larger roster than any other generation before or since, and Generation 5 arguably had the tightest and most original storytelling of the entire franchise, which we might not have been treated to if Game Freak had stuck rigidly to their winning formula. Number 8. Ignoring the call for more of the same. Respawn on Titanfall 2. The two Titanfall games followed very different trajectories. The first was hyped as a system seller for the Xbox 360, and while it offered a competent multiplayer experience, its threadbare game modes and features ended up underwhelming. The sequel, Titanfall 2, by comparison, flew under the radar for many, but those who actually picked it up found a surprisingly compelling single and multiplayer package. Apparently, the missing ingredient was just a healthy dose of disdain for the wishes of series fans. Players were clamouring for more of the same, Titanfall 1, but just a little bit bigger. Instead, the team upended the pace of combat for the sequel and restructured how the game played, getting rid of much of the verticality which defined the original. The final product was instantly familiar to players of Call of Duty and similar shooters, but with zippier movement and stompy mechs to boot. The model of the story should be quite clear. Take an already successful game, like Call of Duty, and just add big stompy mechs. Win. Number 7. Striving for Mass Appeal Nintendo and Sora Limited on Super Smash Bros. Brawl 
When creating the third installment of Nintendo's iconic fighting franchise, series director Masahiro Sakurai famously decided to move away from the fast-paced, tech-heavy gameplay of its predecessor, Super Smash Bros. Melee. This resulted in a very different feel to the gameplay and a greater emphasis on the single-player modes. The tournament community may have denounced the slower, floatier feel of the game, but casual players appreciated greater accessibility and a wider variety of modes. Brawl became a huge critical and commercial success, which helped to extend the Wii's dominance. The prospect of resident puffball Kirby being able to kick seven shades out of ultra-hard mercenary Solid Snake was just too charming to resist. Number 6. Embracing Fantasy – Creative Assembly on Total War Three Kingdoms With half of the Total War franchise clamouring for additional content and iterations of the fantasy side of the series, and the other half waiting for a return to the more grounded, historical settings of the early Total War games, Creative Assembly seemed guaranteed to disappoint at least 50% of their fans with their next title. Still, a Total War based on a heavily romanticised retelling of history, complete with godlike hero units, seemed the perfect way to upset everyone, containing neither historical authenticity or zombie dragons. They somehow managed to pull the opposite trick, however, producing a slick strategy title which gave both history buffs and fantasy fans something to chew on. Three Kingdoms became the fastest selling entry in the whole franchise. Number 5. Changing Everything SIE Santa Monica Studio on God of War God of War 2018 is a very different game to God of War 2005. While now acclaimed as one of the greatest games of the generation, fans were initially distressed by the game's break from tradition. The introduction of adoptive son Atreus raised many eyebrows. As anyone who has ever performed a video game escort quest, or indeed raised an actual human child, will surely understand. Moreover, the tonal shift from button-matchy Greek tragicomedy to artful Scandinavian drama made the 2018 reboot feel like a very different series. However, gameplay, which was great in 2005, is not necessarily still as good now, and the original God of War games really show their age today. The series' newest entry features a much more modern, rich gameplay package held together with a gripping and emotional narrative. It doesn't exactly dispense with the formula that made its forebearers so successful, but it utilises over a decade's worth of additional expertise to sculpt the best possible sequel yet. Number 4. Being Glorified DLC – Valve on Left 4 Dead 2 the only game on this list to earn backlash simply by existing, the sequel dropped only a year after the original Left 4 Dead. Fans of the four-player co-op zombie shooter were concerned by the possibility of a Valve money grab by just rushing out a sequel, and soon after its announcement, a Left 4 Dead 2 boycott group on Steam had attracted over 37,000 members. As you can probably guess, these fears turned out to be groundless. Left 4 Dead 2 introduced a wealth of new modes, levels, and zombie types, as well as notable figures missing from the first iteration, such as melee combat. The boycott group didn't even survive to the release date. Incredibly, at least according to Valve Supremo Gabe Newell, members of the boycott actually pre-ordered the game at a faster rate than other players. Number 3. Chasing the Mobile Game Crowd – Firaxis on Sid Meier's Civilization VI Casual colonialism simulator Civilization came in for flack on the unveiling of its sixth entry. Sporting colourful, larger-than-life visuals, the art style irritated many fans who were used to the more muted and realistic look of Civilization V. Developer Firaxis's protests that they weren't attempting to emulate mobile games were somewhat undermined when Civ 6 literally became a mobile game, getting ported to iOS as well as to the Switch. While the mobile game comparison might seem apt, however, Civilization VI's art direction was more reminiscent of its granddaddy, Civilization IV, which was released during the heady pre-Clash of Clans days of 2005. The vibrant palette and expressive world leaders helped put the charm back into ruthlessly conquering and pillaging your enemies, and it seems to have finally battered its doubters into submission, with 6 recently overtaking 5 on Steam's listing of most played games. Number 2. Closing one door and opening another – Capcom on Resident Evil 4 Get it, doors, because Resident Evil has the door loading screen thing. Lol, I'm funny. 
Resident Evil 4 had a famously drawn out development schedule, with no fewer than four different versions being created and scrapped before Capcom settled on the final design. The eventual product ended up as something of a halfway house, providing a blend of oppressive horror atmosphere and hectic gameplay which would go on to define the series until the soft reboot of Resident Evil 7. At the time, Capcom had an EA-like reputation for releasing similar Resident Evil games year on year, so the complete shift in tone caught many by surprise. But fans needn't have worried. Resident Evil 4 not only reinvigorated its own franchise, but managed to spawn an entirely new one. It went on to become one of the best-selling games on GameCube, and it has been ported to several platforms, including mobile, a feat which not even Skyrim has achieved yet. Number 1. A New Coat of Paint Nintendo on The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker Prior to release, The Wind Waker's new cel-shaded art style was loathed by many. Even your humble Zelda-obsessed presenter here took one look at it and thought, what the butts is this? Riding high off the graphically impressive Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, Nintendo's embrace of cel-shaded visuals stood in stark contrast to the prevailing wisdom that more realistic graphics were better, turning many fans off. Despite the naysayers, however, the result was a visually gorgeous game packed with character and incredible dungeon design, which also managed to disguise the shortcomings of the underpowered GameCube. Although not an unqualified success story commercially, The Wind Waker is now rightly considered a critical masterpiece. Nintendo makes some very, very strange decisions at times, but gems like this, and of course the more recent Breath of the Wild, should serve as a reminder that in most cases, they have definitely earned the benefit of the doubt. There we have it folks, that was our list. Do you agree with all the decisions made here? Thank you so much for watching guys. Once again, my name has been Rach. Be sure to subscribe to the What Culture YouTube channel for more lists like this every single day. You guys have been awesome. Follow me on Twitter if you like at Don't Rage Quit. Have an awesome day, take care of yourselves and we will see you tomorrow.